In the Chrono notation, there are two symbols that you will encounter a lot, the Kronecker delta and the permutation symbol. Both of them can be used to simplify expressions. In this video, we will first encounter the Kronecker delta and we will also see a few examples. So this our Kronecker delta, it's the delta ij, so it has two indices, i and j. And what does it do? Well, it's almost always zero, zero if i is not equal to j, and only one if i equals j. So delta over one, delta to two, and delta three three are one, and all the others are zero. So we can write this as a matrix as follows. Uh, only the elements on the diagonal are one, delta over one, delta to two, and delta three three, and the others are zero. So how can we use this? Let us do a few examples. What happens if we compute delta ii? So here we have the sum over i, so we get delta 1 1 plus delta 2 2 plus delta 3 3, and those are all 1, so that gives us a 3. Next example. What happens if we compute, for example, delta 1m times am? Now we have the sum over m, so we get the delta 1 1 a1 plus the delta 1 2 a2 plus the delta 1 3 a3. Now those two are 0. So we get the a1. So the delta 1m, am, picks out the first component of a. So more general, if you have a, not a delta 1m, am, but a delta im, am, you're going to pick out the ith component of a, ai. So a sum like this, you basically, summing over m, uh, you replace the m of the a over here by the i over there. That's what effectively happens. You select a certain component. Now let's see what happens if we compute delta 1m times tmj. So some more examples. You get sum over the m. So we get the uh, delta 1 1 t1 j plus delta 1 2 t 2 j plus delta 1 3 t 3 j. And again, these are zero. So we get the uh, and delta 1, 1 is 1, so we get a T1J. So what does it do? The delta 1M TMJ selects the component T1J, where the M equals 1. Or more general, if you compute delta IM TMJ, you get uh, to select the i component, so you get the TIJ over there. Now you can do this, of course, you can replace the TMJ by uh, delta MJ, and then you get, have the delta uh, i m delta m j. What happens if you compute that? Uh, similarly, you get the delta i j. So that's the consequence of this line over here. And then finally, something nice. If you have an orthonormal basis B consisting of e1, e2, and e3. Now, if you take the, start to take inner products, e i inner product e j, now what happens, you have an orthonormal basis, so if i and j are not the same, you get zero, factors are orthogonal. And if you take the same, say e1 with e1, uh, you get uh, something which equals one because you are orthonormal, so you are, you are normalized. So e i inner product e j will yield zero if i and j are not the same, and one if i and j are the same. So that's exactly our Kronecker delta. And uh, since we uh, like to have orthonormal bases in many examples, this is a very useful identity over here. 